Hey, sports fans, Coach Nick here, and another edition of Court Call with Ronnie Nunn. This one's got some taunting. So, Ronnie, are you going to come and bring your A game today? I try to bring my A game every night, but of course, uh, I can make mistakes anytime I blow and not blow the whistle. So, I hope my judgment is uh, right in there with what's, what's expected. Well, I will, I will make sure that I will not wave my finger in your face if I don't agree. I'll, I'll try and keep it civil. So, now, uh, that is now that is taunting. <laughs> yes, that's right. Now, before we get to that play, let's keep the suspense. So we're going to first look at a play that Rod Moizo uh, has suggested for us, which is Eric Gordon going to the basket when the Pelicans took on the Mavericks. Call their own fouls him going to the hoop, but it certainly was a strange play with some stuff going on here. So, Ronnie, do you agree with what the call was made on the floor? Actually, I do. We got a, a nice fast break going. He gathers the ball, and the question is, how many steps does he take? He gathers with the left foot, and he finishes with the left foot, but then he takes a right foot down. That's the third step. Now, what's the big deal on this play? Had he scored that goal, you could not have had a continuation. So the referees are really correct here. He gets a travel, but he doesn't score. You can't score on a foul in which you also travel and make a basket. So good judgment by the officials. Put him to the line because he deserves a continuation, but he does not get a conversion. He only gets that with two free throws at the free throw line. Ah, so that's a great thing to be aware of is that you can't take advantage of a foul after the fact and then take as many steps as you like and score on that one uh, no matter what. So I like that notion. It, had he scored, it would not have counted. It simply would have been two free throws. Exactly. And that's what we got. We have two free throws because he didn't score. And of course, if he did score, we would have wiped it and gave him again the two free throws he was deserving. Let's talk about the next clip, which is when uh, last night the Rockets and the Heat met up and Birdman uh, made a nice block and then had a little bit of a gesture. Marvin wants to know if that was the right call. Should that have been called a, a taunting foul on uh, Chris Anderson? The answer is absolutely yes. Uh, you know, we have a drive and then a, a, a throwback and then a drive to the hoop. And Anderson does a great job. But then all of a sudden he does another version of the Matumbo uh, finger wave. He gives like the safe sign uh, to the player. Uh, not good for baseball, but not good for basketball. And that also means like no way, you know, uh, I, I, you know, don't come through here. It's another version of uh, it's not going to happen. And, uh, of course, that is a taunt. The official responds uh, exactly as he should. It's an unusual taunt, but he was able to pick it up to notice. And don't forget to notice it was illegal. And don't forget that he also looked at the player, which also made for uh, a recognition of a taunt. I also feel like part of it is the interruption of his momentum going back down the court. If you're going to stand in place while the play is going on, that to me seems like the, the real deal breaker there, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he stands there, looks at the player, makes the sign, which is another unusual sign, but it certainly falls under the category of taunt. And uh, the veteran official right there picks up on it and just gets it. And he, by the way, he gets it early. He gives the technical early uh, on this fast break. Sometimes if a fast break's really gone into its motion, you might wait to see if there's going to be a pullback of that ball or if there's going to be a basket. And officials can, in fact inflict, if you will, a technical after that fast break. Do you agree with the no taunting rule in, that, in this instance? Like, do you agree that, they, that we should have it, or should we allow the players to you know, be a little bit more free with their movement? No, I think taunting is, uh, is provocative. And uh, in our league, the reason why it came up to be an illegal act is because it was generating more provocative behaviors from the players as they competed. We want them to, to be provocative in their the ability to play, but not provocative in their behavior that, that is, in fact, taunting. Well, I, I guess we'll, we'll limit uh, Mutombo's finger-wagging to the commercials he's in now where he's making a nice living off, which is uh, good to see. So <laughs> let's, let's move on to Damari Carroll, who was playing uh, the Celtics and the Hawks met up. And uh, our man Jordan, who loves to uh, submit us great calls, asked us the question of, as he's coming down, the ball hits off of a foot and gets a, becomes a turnover, and there wasn't a whistle. And he wants to know why that wasn't called a kick ball. Well, it's a good question, and I'm, I'm looking at the play right now as this transition occurs, and all of a sudden, uh, the, the ball is loose, and how did it get loose? And he's right. The ball was kicked. But for kick balls to be a violation, remember, 
uh, all our fans is it has to be something in the judgment of the official that was purposeful kicking. You kick the ball to prevent a pass. You kick the ball to create, let's say, a, uh, a loss of the ball, like in this case in transition. But the officials deem it, and I think they deemed it correctly in their judgment, that this was incidental uh, contact of the ball with the foot or the leg, and it wasn't purposeful. So play on. And that's what you do. And that's a great rule because if I were dribbling and I got into trouble, I would just dribble it off of a guy's foot and I would say, look, it's a kick. You know what? Most times kicks are pretty pretty well received as a purpose or not. We don't have a lot of trouble with that call. Very, very seldom. I mean, the percentages on us calling kick balls are usually in the high 90th percentile. And I'm talking 98, 99. We don't miss this play too much. And we also judge it pretty well, as you see in this case. Great. Well, if you're out there playing pickup, make sure you reference this court call. So next time you get into an argument with somebody, you'll know what the real rule is. Because we know, Lord knows, that gets argued out quite a bit. <laughs> Let's move on to our next call, which uh, is D. Durston wants to know about Kevin Durant's spin move and then a blocking call sort of all in one play here. I think he had issue. He felt like perhaps there's a travel with the spin move and maybe it should have been a charge. So, Ronnie, break this one down for us and let us know what you thought uh, of the accuracy. Well, let me just tell you, first of all, it's a heck of a move and it is all legal. So as I explain why, uh, keep that in mind. You got a great uh, play down here from the other end that starts in the backcourt. And all of a sudden, Durant intercepts it, and here he comes. First, he gets the all-American Earl Monroe spin move. He has not traveled on the spin. He didn't palm the ball on the spin. And now as he comes forward, he now is dealing with the defender, secondary defender, who, in this case, throws his arms out to try to get into his way and then falls to the floor. So the putting of the arms out is where the foul is. And by the way, the gather of that step is like all our gathers. One foot is down. He's got two steps coming. He does it and he goes right through the defender in this case and, and a legal play all the way. And by the way, highly noted by Hubie Brown as uh, you know phenomenal movement from one end of the court to another for this size guy. And, and, and everybody knows uh, this Durant young man is quite a sensation indeed. And certainly uh, the attempt at a, at, a, at a charge by Barnes was, I mean, at, at the very least, um, you know, not, uh, not kosher. Certainly no one should call that one. And uh, certainly we, we, we must have a lot more uh, squared up contact to be considered a, a charge. Yeah, and he needed to really hold his ground. If he wanted to make a case for himself before the judges there, if he held his ground, you might have had something and he might have been correct. But he flailed and, all, and also, you know, he threw his arms out. And I don't think this is a flop. But, uh, you know, if he does plays like that, he might be considered looking to flop. And that sort of falls in the flop category, and that's finable. So, um, so but uh, other than that, it was a beautiful broken play all the way from one end to the other. Well done by a guy who's... I want to say 6'10". Am I right, Coach? Is he about 6'10"? You know, that's 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 taken a, maybe a, an inch off of him. He doesn't like to be listed, I don't think, at his real height. But I've seen him, and, man, he is he's legitimately 6'10 plus. Well, you know, in high school, they try to raise you up on uh, your size, and then you get to college and the pros, they try to bring you down. <laughs> that's right. Well, I was a lot taller when I had more hair, so I'm, I'm still trying. Well, let's not talk about that, Coach. It's sensitive <laughs> now, but I'm glad the style is in because uh, – you're looking at a guy that can uh, blind you sometimes, depending on how the light hits my head. Hey, be careful, Ronnie. Somewhere out there on the Internet is a picture of you with a little bit of an afro uh, playing basketball. So uh, be <laughs> careful what shows up on the screen during these shows. We'll see. Let's yeah. move on to our last play, which is Damian Lillard's game-winning uh, attempt from three. There was no review when there was a little bit of uh, shenanigans going on in front of the rim as the ball approached. Uh, I think the real question here was, uh, why wasn't it reviewed at all? You thought you would think that there was something to review, and Earl was real curious about this. Yeah, and Earl, and, and you know what? It's, it has an unnatural feel about it, these kind of questionable plays that come up. And I think right now, uh, you know, in the NBA's continual growth and purposeful growth of instant replay, there are plays that stick out there and say, well, why wouldn't we look at this one? But right now, as it exists, the official has to make a call for him to believe that goaltending was the problem. And uh, apparently no call was made, so therefore going to instant replay is void. And uh, it's something you cannot do. Now, they did get together and ask, I, I don't know, maybe is there something in our understanding? Because as these instant replays issues come up, 
they add up in an official's mind as to what you can and cannot do because some things seem common sense wise and some things actually by rule. So since the call was not made, you could not go to instant replay. And by the way, uh, it would have been interesting if the call was made because you two players go up, you wonder who hit it. And in this case, Batoon hit it, and he hit it after the, the bell. I'm sorry, after the horn sound. So uh, it was a dead play on that case. Uh, had he, you know, tipped the ball in, for example, ah. uh, it would have been too late. So that, that had, there's your ahead. answer probably, right? They probably, at the very least, when they're talking, when you're down there, they're probably going to say to themselves, okay, who hit it? And I think that probably at least two of them said for sure it was Batum, right? So they knew who yes. was team. And then yes. the other guy probably said, well, you know what? Not only did he hit it, but we know it was after the clock. So no matter what happened, it would have been late, whatever we were going to call. Is that probably what happened? That's better said than I, than I said it, and it's exactly correct. Um, uh, again, if there was a question of two players going up and they were unsure – and they did make a call and say, I think it was the defender or I think it was the offensive player. We could have looked at it and seen it. And by the way, the game is not dead because the horn sounded. If a defender actually hit that ball, uh, we'd have goaltending and we'll score, even though the horn and the lights were on around, that, uh, around the frame of that backboard. But uh, in this case, the offensive player hit it. The game was dead. And that play was certainly well after the uh, the horn and lights. Well, that's real exciting for me because, you know, we spent a lot of time having to go through these reviews in a lot of these games. It's making the games longer. And I think a lot of times they just kind of go to it just, just to go to it. And so here was great restraint when they had the referees all on the same page and, uh, and didn't, didn't, you know, waste any more time because it was very clear to them. And that's a real, um, that's a real pro uh, positive note in the whole replay process, I think, is the fact that they didn't review it. Well, you know, you're absolutely right about it. And the other thing is the restraint has to do with the memory of when I go and when I don't go. And some things look common sense wise to go. And again, they are continually growing on, you know, the, the, the committee on rules uh, uh, based on what they want to add. So it's an ongoing process for them. It's a high congratulations for them to not go on this situation. Well, uh, a high congratulations to you as well for another great episode of Court Call. Uh, keep them coming, sports fans. Don't forget, at any time you see a call, tweet us out with the hashtag Court Call and include the date if you can. That will help me. And uh, we'll get to it on the show. So, Ronnie, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, some real great stuff. And uh, don't forget, sports fans, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel. We're a conversation. You in? I'm in, Coach. Another great episode. Thanks for having me.